magnetic friction is the friction force on an object which is already moving Friction force on an object which is already, somebody already caused this thing to move. And it's already moving. So this is the friction force uh, on it. Fk, this is called kinetic friction force, equals mu kn. Okay. Couple things that are interesting or uh, that stand out about kinetic friction force are these. The mu k is for most materials, the mu k is less than the mu s. Sometimes it's the same, but usually it's less. As you can see in that table, if you look, you're going to see that mu k is less than mu s. Now, what does that mean if mu k is less than mu s? Remember, mu s tells you how hard it is to make the object move, how much the friction force resists you to prevent it from moving. Kinetic friction force tells you what's the friction on it while it's moving or after it's moving. So it seems like it's harder to make something move than to keep it moving once you moved it. You see, that's what that means. So that's the meaning of this. It's harder to make something move than to keep it moving. Does that make sense? Why? Why would it be why would it be harder? to make something move initially than to keep it moving once you move them. Think about on the molecular level. Here's the molecules. Uh, and here's a guy trying to move it, right? When you're first trying to move it, those molecules of the two surfaces that are in contact, they say, hey, come on, relax. We're just enjoying our day, you know, trying to make us work harder. You know, we're watching TV here, relaxing on the couch. Okay, so they kind of get agitated. They start resisting you, you know. But once you made a move, then they get over that initial uh, surprise. Once you make them move, then they don't resist you as much. This is the same effect that you guys have all experienced. You say, oh man, in next week we have a test in physics. Oh, when am I going to get to it? At the beginning, you kind of have a little sluggishness. You don't want to do your homework. You're playing PlayStation, you know. Then by the time something hits you and you say, okay, you know what? The test is getting close. I got to start studying. Once you start studying, you get over that hump, right? Then it's easier to start studying. You get into it, right? So it's that initial phase that's hard. Of course, this isn't true about any of you, right? You guys don't even have that difficulty to start. Like, you, you always, you get right on the ball. So that's this uh, phenomenon. Another interesting thing about kinetic friction is that it has no, uh, it has a minimal velocity dependence, or we could almost say it has no velocity dependence. Uh, notice that the equation has nothing to do with the velocity that the object is moving at. There's no velocity dependence. In other words, the, fast, the faster you go, there's, no, there's not, no, uh, no more friction on you than if you go slow. You see what I mean? You go, whether you're going 20 miles an hour or 30 miles an hour or 50 miles an hour, the road resists you with the same resistance. Now, is this also true about air friction? 
Okay, let's say you're going 20 miles an hour, you open the windows, you take your hand out. You go 60 miles an hour, you take your hand out. 120 miles an hour, you put your hand out. Is it the same resistance? No. Air friction depends on the velocity that you're going at, but not surface friction. Surface friction, kinetic friction, is velocity independent. Okay? We're going to learn later on in chapter 6 about air friction. We're going to learn that the equation for air friction is negative BV. The air resistance is proportional to the velocity that you're traveling at, and the proportionality constant is B. But surface friction is velocity independent. Okay? Um, Okay, so that's pretty much it as far as that. So the, uh, the kinetic friction is less than static, and it's easier to make something move once you moved it. Um, I think that's about it. Um, we talked about that. Oh, how about the, as far as the table? What are the sort of the ranges of mu k? Let's write that down, and then we can jump into our, uh, what is like the minimum you see there. Point zero, zero, three. Oh, is that the bones, the human bones? Yeah. Oh, okay. And uh, and then the maximum, point eight. That's the rubber on concrete, right? Okay, so that one, that one was the same there. That was rubber on concrete for the one. Same thing here. That's basically like the friction force on your tires, on the rubber on your tires. And it depends on the, the quality of the rubber also, you know. Okay, so, okay, now let's do a...